All right. Something a little bit different today and every week from now until I decide to stop. That's right, I'm calling this my working class guitar blog, vlog, whatever you wanna call it. You know, there's a lot of things that I think I can talk about with my subscribers and my friends and folks that you know don't necessarily want to learn a cool way to play a blues shuffle but they want some insight about how I've made a living playing the guitar uh, and how I continue to survive in these ever-changing times in music I mean you can see I turned the camera on I sat down I got some notes about some things I want to talk about mainly a 2020 year in review and how I as a working musician survived in the year 2020. Lots of stuff has happened for sure. So in January of 2020, it was started off as like, I mean, every year for the past like three or four years has gotten exponentially better for me and my career. I'm so thankful for it, but it started it at the 2020 NAMM show where I was doing some uh, doing some demos for Universal Audio, the Oxbox, big fan of, big fan of it. They got, I got two of them behind me. Um, they're one of the best companies in the musical instrument business, hands down, with the way they treat their people and the products they make and all the care and attention to detail. So it's always an honor to work with them and to work with a bunch of great people and guest artists like Tim Pierce and Butch Walker, or Brett Papa and Rebea and David Ryan Harris. Geez, I'm, I know I'm leaving some people out, but we had a lot of fun. Oh, Tyler Larson I'm, I met there. So um, that was a great springboard into 2020. I didn't know what the rest of the year was gonna hold for me, and I'm sure the same goes for you watching this as well. So there was also um, a party with a bunch of YouTubers, and I was just starting to kind of get into my YouTube career, really saying, I'm gonna take this seriously, because I skirted around it for a long time, to be honest. And you know that's where a bunch of really like sort of well-known YouTubers were. And the year before, none of them knew who I was. And then the year, of 2020, the next year, um, a lot of people said, hey, I love what you're doing, keep it up, you're gonna do great. I mean, that's everybody from Anthony Stauffer, Texas Blues Alley, uh, Andy, Real Andy Guitar, uh, you know, Paul Davids, the list goes on and on. They knew who I was. Even the Andertons guys, you know, so cool to just kind of rub elbows with people that I've been watching that said, man, love what you're doing, keep it up. So that was January for the most part. It was, it was fun, came back, I did some sessions. I remember I was in a session the night Kobe Bryant died and it totally threw me off and I'm pretty sure I blew the session and will never get called by that producer ever again. But it really affected me because I'm a huge basketball fan and um, you know, the impact of that person dying with their child at such a young age was, was, really, was really tough and it was tough to deal with and try to be creative at that moment too. I remember I left a bunch of gear at the studio, didn't realize I did for like the next three weeks. I was looking for pedals and they weren't around and uh, they never bothered to call me. And, Saw my briefcase there with my name on it. And for whatever reason, I figured it out, went back, got my stuff back. Anyway, so the year progresses on. Um, February comes. This is February when I'm recording this now, a couple weeks before my birthday. I played a gig on my birthday at the uh, the infamous, or not infamous, that would make it sound bad. The famous, uh, what's it called? Um, Eddie's Attic in, in Georgia. It's near Atlanta. I played with a great singer-songwriter named Nick Wayne. It was one of the best gigs of my life. I've been playing guitar for 25 years and doing gigs since I was 18, maybe younger. And it was one of the best gigs I ever had. It was, he's a great artist, amazing songwriter, let me do my thing, killer band. Um, I'll post a little bit, little video here. This is a fun little thing that we did. <laughs> It's a great way to kind of wrap up February. I also made a trip to Sweetwater with Martin Guitar where we introduced um, their new SC13E, it's back there somewhere. 
it's a guitar that they introduced at that NAMM show I was talking about in January. And then um, I kind of did a, a, you do a big presentation there with these music companies. It's 7 a.m., nobody wants to be there, but they got to do it and learn about the new products. And then we present multiple times during the day. It's like a very interesting gig. But the folks at Sweetwater are really cool. They're great to me. I've known them for years, and it's always nice to see them. So, you know, fast forward now, we're in March. Uh, COVID is happening. I mean, it is a thing now. And I start to I decide, hey, I'm going to start to live stream uh, and do it with uh, in conjunction with a course that I was releasing with True Fire called Hip Blues Outside Lines, this one right here. Uh, there's a lot of really fun stuff in there that uh, was a next level of my teaching. I do a lot of intermediate and beginner type stuff because frankly, those are the folks that want and are looking for the instruction. And I think I communicate well to folks just starting out. So, but this course was a departure, more advanced, and it was a lot of fun, and it was w really well received. But I was doing the live stream thing, just got started, had no idea what I was doing. My buddy Eric Andreas helped me kind of get my footing in that as well, which was really cool. Um, so then also, I remember when I released that course, it wasn't long before that or after that, similar, somewhere around the same day when I re released the course, that a tornado ripped through Nashville, crushed parts of Nashville, the community was devastated. That on top of COVID was just like, wow, is 2020 gonna get any worse? Chances are it won't, but for a lot of people it did. And uh, hopefully we're on the rebound. But you know, in April and May, they, they continue to be great months in the sense of I'm learning how to promote what I'm doing, doing more live streams, getting better at it. I released the course Acoustic Crossover, which is really pointed at the um, guitar player, the electric guitar player that has to play that one acoustic song and um, you know get stuck playing their pentatonic stuff. They need some more ideas. We had a lot of fun doing that course. At least I did. It was great to put a bunch of different kinds of songs together for sure. But um, no edits. I'm just reading down my list here. Uh, I do, a, I do a live stream for Universal Audio. That's on their YouTube channel. I went through a song that I, uh, that I worked on for a friend that I, an artist I used to produce. And this song I just played guitars on. And we talked about using Luna, um, their recording system, very much like what you'd think of like Pro Tools or Logic, or one of those kinds of things. And I'm recording currently in Luna um, as we speak. I use it all the time. It's a great, great piece of software. And it's only gonna get better. I did a live stream for QSC, played a couple of my own songs, did an interview there. Uh, Jeff Mackerlane, my friend, did uh, started his live stream um, situation, jumped in his thing, had a lot of fun with his folks. Uh, and it was, I think it was the month of live streams, it was April. Uh, I did a jam in place for Martin Guitar. Again, very similar to the other ones I did where I played a lot of my, my, my songs um, and got to sing and perform, which is something I usually don't get to do. Um, more live streaming in June and July, a True Fire live stream. Um, I started working with Eric Andreas, your guitar sage, on my beginner and intermediate blues rhythm courses. And um, that was a lot of fun because it was yet like another company to work with. And it was kind of like I was stocking shelves. I was putting my product on their shelves and see how their customers would, would gravitate towards it. And a few months later, we released a course, which I'll get to. Um, and a lot of other things happen along the way that sustain me. You know, the fact that I had a camera and could record audio well and can play and can teach and describe things. Um, companies were coming to me and say, could you make a video for this or make a video for that? I worked with QSC. I started doing stuff with American Musical Supply. And as a guitar player for hire, I mean, this is how I keep the roof over my head. Those projects, you know, thanks to all of those companies, which I'm sure I'll leave some out, really helped during the leanest of times. Um, the gig I had all through 2019 with David Lee Murphy allowed me to collect unemployment, which I never did in my entire life. It was a lot, there was a lot of hoops to jump through, but that helped too. So it was an interesting six month point up to here at August. Um, in September, um, I do a guitar lesson for a premier guitar. That's a gig that pays, that pays also. So it was nice to like submit this stuff and and get paid to kind of keep the ship afloat as well. Um, but then in October, I release my course called Blues Rock Connection. This is a fun course. Now it directly connects to the first course I did with Brett Papa called uh, Complete Blues Volume One. And we were gonna work on volume two, and then it was like, ah, we better not work in the same room for a few months. And that's, you know, in the heat of 2020, I mean, middle of the year. 
So I put this course together at my place. I didn't know what I was doing very much with cameras and, and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I finally I figured it out, got, got it tabbed, got the tracks done. And it's a great combination of like venturing out of traditional blues, but still keeping some of those those same uh, ideas that you learn from maybe my volume one course, but putting it more in some rock and funk and R&B type stuff. So that was huge. That was such a fun thing to do because um, we didn't think we'd be able to. And we, we pulled it off and thanks to Brett for letting me do it here at my place. Um, and then it was like, boom, course after course after course. Uh, November was beginner blues rhythm guitar or beginning blues rhythm guitar. And that's on my website. Uh, it's on Eric Andreas' site and it's through you to me. And it was for the stone cold beginner but wanted to learn, or the beginner that wanted to learn some blues rhythm. So it's very much focused around dominant seven chords, um, very basic rhythms, but it's a stacking of the of the tools process of the of the foundations. Because then in the next month, uh, I think December at this time, I release intermediate blues rhythm guitar, and that course has also done really well because a lot of people come to me for advice and for lessons, but they have to go backwards a little bit, and it's always tough to go backwards. So if you can find a course that's taught by me with my methods, and you walk through it and you feel good about it taking you on to the more complex stuff is going to make more sense for sure. Uh, that, that about covers an entire year. But what I thought was, let me just talk about some of this stuff because you can see it's a hodgepodge of things. In there's interspersed with all that is one-on-one -on -one lessons with Zoom students, uh, s recording sessions with people sending me their material from out of town. Some are here in town, uh, one of which I'm redoing an acoustic track for. Uh, actually, let me preface that by saying, I did the track, they want an acoustic version, the artist got signed, they want new stuff, and I'm gonna do it right from here, and it's the, you know, how we work in this day and age. So there's always a different thing coming in all the time. Premier Guitar will call up, say, hey, we want another lesson. Great, there's some, there's a, a paycheck coming from that. So I'm always sort of spinning plates, as I heard somebody say once, like in the circus, when the, the guy's balancing the plates, I'm always doing that. Uh, just got back from Brett Papa's place yesterday where we're finishing up Complete Blues Volume 2. So there's always, always, always something going on. Uh, I'm always moving gear sideways, buying stuff, selling stuff, making a couple bucks here. It's it's an interesting business that I think a lot of you folks might want to know about. And I'm going to pull the curtain back as much as I can without, uh, you know, sort of compromising anybody <laughs> in the process. It'll be all from from my mouth, my uh, my sort of stream of consciousness, if you will. But uh, that's it. That was 2020. And what you're going to what I'm going to talk about next week um, should be who knows. Uh, whatever comes down the pike. I got a couple things that are going to be happening and it could be a boring week. It could be a really exciting week. It could be status quo. Uh, but, oh, I forgot. November. Let's go back to November. Um, I worked with an amazing artist that I've been a fan of for a long time, Joss Stone. We went in and recorded um, an acoustic version of her song called Walk With Me. Uh, and there's us playing it right there on the uh, Today Show. Uh, and it was a pre-recorded performance that we send to them. And it was a blast. I've worked with her since then a little bit. We did some live streams from her house. How could I forget that was one of the most exciting things I did all year. Uh, it felt like it was in 2021 though, because it was so late 2020. An amazing person. She just had a baby. She has an amazing family and one of the greatest singers I've ever played with. So that was a highlight of 2020 also. So I'm getting all this stuff in. The other less, the other uh, vlogs I do won't be as racy and scattered, but really I thought would be cool was to answer questions too. Because somebody will say, how did you get this gig? Um, what do you do to prepare for a session? How do you write a guitar course? Put those questions in the comments. I'll go through them and that'll be great fuel for me to do these every week. So it's gonna be the Working Class Guitar Series here. Uh, I came up with that name a while ago when somebody says, you're the working man's guitar teacher. And I was like, by God I am, but I'm the working class guitar teacher. So it's like for all of us that are taking our lunch pail to the gig, trying to make money playing guitar, um, hopefully I can shed some light on how to do that and to talk about it in this day and age, which is different than any other in history. All right, that was a lot. You know, 200 people might watch this, 2,000 people might watch this, whatever. Your questions and comments are encouraged, and I hope to interact with you in the future. This is episode one, so welcome. Here I am. 
I'm Corey. This is Working Class Guitar. I'll see you on another episode. Peace.